Central to the uh, morbid antinatalist argument, and again, I hasten to point out that's my term. I don't know of anyone who uh, self-labels themselves that way, but uh, that's my term, a somewhat hostile label, I must confess. But the morb morbid antinatalists, um, have their view of existence is that non-existence allows um, harm to be absent, and existent, uh, existence allows harm to be present. Uh, okay, I, I get that. But what seems to be quite woolly is the fact that uh, harm is not quite well defined. I'd like to actually define what exactly um, they mean or what is meant by the term harm because the problem is um, when you look at that entire subject of harm in and you use exactly the same uh, withering and pitiless logic that Mr. Benatar does, you come to some pretty weird conclusions concerning what harm actually is. Let me just begin with a quote from Mr. Benatar. Each of us was harmed by being brought into existence. That harm is not negligible because the quality of even the best of lives is very bad and considerably worse than most people recognize it to be. Although it is obviously too late to prevent our own existence, it is not too late to prevent the existence of future possible people. All right, I think that that's, in as much as one is capable of the mental gymnastics necessary to wrap one's head around that, I think I can take it as a given that most antinatalists, or people that I would hostilely call morbid antinatalists, accept this logic. But the problem is, of course, they leave the subject of potentiality and what that involves vague, and they also leave vague the subject of harm. Let me put um, an interesting scenario here. We have a potential human being who is brought into existence through uh, birth. Okay, they are brought from non-existence into existence. They are quadriplegic. Uh, they're a paranoid schizophrenic uh, with uh, white depression, which is about as severe as depression can get. Our good old friend, the cluster headache. Uh, they have acute chronic fibromyalgia, which is basically pain amplifiers, untreatable. Um, and they have every conceivable malady imaginable, and they live to be a hundred years old, suffering this the entire time. They are also the victim of political persecution. They're deliberately starved um, and uh, tortured from the moment they're born till the moment they die in the most ghastly way the human central nervous system will allow. In other words, we put, take a human being and essentially put them in a pain amplifier for their entire life, and we prolong that life as long as is humanly possible. We, we make the worst possible human existence, okay? Now, that human existence will eventually come to an end. We're all mortal. Where does the harm go when a human being ceases to be an actual and goes back to being a potential or whatever it is they go back to being? They go back to the same state as they were before uh, they were born. They, after death, it's the same state. Where is the harm? Where does that harm go? In one instant, that harm is gone. It may as well never have existed. It is zero. It has been abolished. Whatever harm that that individual has suffered, if we take the worst possible scenario. Um, there's an interesting, and this idea actually is present in, 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 human, um, in human existence, this idea of ashes to ashes, etc. Um, and um, there's a, a lot of wisdom in these. I held up asterisks. Here's Tintin in the uh, episode known as L'Oreille Cassé, or the Broken Ear. Tintin is down in South America, and through the weird twists of the plot, he ends up in front of a firing squad. Well, the firing squad in this banana republic, um, their, their, their guns are defective, so the, fire, so the execution has to be postponed. The commander of the firing squad, being a Latin American, says, oh, don't worry, um, well, this is just a minor postponement. Come with me, we'll have a drink. To Tintin, he says this. You're going to still be executed, but we've got to, I'm sorry for the interruption, but let's go have a drink. In the meantime, he says, right uh, here in this part, 
for all, all those of us who have read Tintin will recognize this, he says something very, very interesting. Salud, as he clinks his glass of uh, aguardiente with uh, Tintin. By and large, being shot is just a nasty moment that's soon over, eh? One shouldn't take it too seriously. Think about that for a moment. Tintin is about to be put in front of a firing squad and shot. And he's told by the man who is in charge of the firing squad that he shouldn't take it too seriously. Because it's, it's a nasty moment that will soon be over. When you think about it, what that, uh, what that officer in, uh, in the uh, army of a banana republic, a fictitious banana republic, is saying um, is actually uh, a fairly optimistic view of life and death itself. It's not without its own morbidity, but it's certainly infused with a great amount of resignation, I suppose. Um, uh, I, the, the attitude of um, don't sweat the big stuff, because what's coming is what's going to get us all eventually, the great leveler, death. Um, and it is really just a nasty moment that will soon be over. Pretty soon you'll be beyond all of this. You won't be alive anymore to suffer any of this. So in that nasty moment that, it, that will soon be over, you will then be in a state where pain and suffering and, in uh, Mr. Benatar's words, harm have been abolished. There is no harm in existence there is no possible harm that will not one day be abolished, conclusively abolished. The counterpart to better to never have been born is better to never have taken anything in this existence too seriously because no matter what you do, it will eventually be nothing again. That involves harm. I don't want to hear all the appeals to emotion about how I would feel if someone had put all these horrible things to, you know, caused all these terrible harms to me. And to be perfectly honest, Mr. Benatar is himself guilty of some pretty non-academic uh, appeals to emotion in his, uh, in his work. Um, I don't want to hear all that. I want the same kind of withering logic to anyone who cares to refute this. Uh, no appeals to emotion, no appeals to these people that you know who are suffering horrifically. How is harm harmful? Harm and existence will one day not exist. Whatever harm is done will be conclusively and irreversibly erased, and it will it might as well have never been. For example, People tell me about the Elephant Man. Where is, where is his harm today? Now this leads us to the, to the question of um, why take someone into existence where there is harm? I have to answer that question with, with the um, inevitable answer, why not? What's the big deal about harm? We have infinity here, we have existence with its harm, and then at the end of it, we have infinity again. We have nothing, something, nothing. Why worry? The only, the only objection I can have to that is, why bring someone into that when they can just stay there because they're going there afterwards? And I say, why not? Either way, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Thank you.